Yeah. The Mark Thompson Show. It's time. He comes in on Fridays. You know this guy from the Marina Times. You've seen him lurking around the Bay Area and Los Angeles. He goes back and forth. He comes and goes on a rainbow. How about it? For the amazing Michael Snyder, the culture blaster, everybody. Happy. Happy, happy popcorn day, everybody. I mean, how appropriate. <laughs> I'm coming in here talking about movies, and it's popcorn day. Yeah. You know, I like when you get those big tin barrels or aluminum barrels, sure. and there's like uh, candy corn, sure. and there's cheese corn, and regular old corn, and you can just sit there and, and, and corn yourself into a corn coma. If you're joining us late, it is National Popcorn Day today. Of course, of course. Uh, I, I never felt that popcorn needed a day. Just like, I don't think you need a National Donut Day. I don't think you need like a national chocolate cake day mm. you know you need like national old dog at the shelter day that's what you know those are the things that need days that's in this so sweet world. you know yeah. i'm uh, lobbying for national unpopped popcorn broken tooth visit your dentist day because <laughs> see, well that's, that's uh, actually yeah. you know that's a problem it, it, has it been a problem for you in the past happens in the theater I, do I, you I, get a popcorn when you're a theater critic there sitting with the other theater let critics? me just say something and i say it from the heart Okay. The good studios and the good distributors give us a little chip or chit or ticket, chit, 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 uh, that <laughs> enable us, um, uh, that give us and we are able to cash them in. I don't, cash isn't the issue, right. uh, for popcorn and a, uh, and a drink. It's like a voucher so you can yes. have the movie experience that many others would. The good studios <laughs> and the good distributors do that. You know who you are, bad studios and bad distributors. <laughs> uh, anyway, wow. it is National Popcorn Day. It's, it's a bit of a big week. I mean, after all that fuss about the Iowa caucus earlier this week, I only have one thing to say. Caucus? They don't even know us. <laughs> anyway, oh, my um, God, uh, Michael. How no, dare you? Mark, just so you know uh, what a loyal listener I am and that I was tuned into the first hour today, I heard you guys discussing the Innocence Project. Yes, and I'm proud to announce that I was just named chairman of the Guilt Project. Our yeah. first case, Donald Trump. Wow. Well, There's never been anything her. like this. Very nice. I know. Very good. So uh, uh, you want to talk about movies? Michael, working. are you out of your topical material now? Is that where My chunk, my topical chunk. Your little chunk? topical chunk. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I, I try to make it uh, callbacks. Yes, uh, I like it. You've shown events. that you've listened to the show. Yeah, I, yeah. I think there's a lot that recommends it. I'm part of the Mark Thompson family, and I want to say, Brother Mark, if yes, I sir. may, yeah. uh, and it's early. It's not even February yet, but yeah. I hope that my drop, another classic Mark oh, Thompson yeah. time waster, is included in this year's Mark's Madness. Albert, let me ask you about that, uh, just because Michael has mentioned this to me off the air. He's concerned that his... Uh, Albert, thank you. Classic, um, this is a classic Mark Thompson time waster drop will not make it because we don't really use it much. Um, yeah, the schedule it. isn't too strong right now. We need <laughs> to uh, use it a little more so people get it. Yeah, familiar. right now, yeah. Michael, it's not really in the rotation at all. But Whenever it's classic Mark it, Thompson time waster. Whenever it, Mark a, yeah. decides to do one of his Who Wants to Be a Millionaire gigs, this thing should be pulled out. This well, is a classic to... Mark Thompson time waster. Yeah, I don't know, Michael. Maybe. I, 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 I appreciate that you want to be in Mark's Madness, yeah. but I don't know if that's what you need. This is a classic to... Mark Thompson time waster. Hey, Maybe dude. It's okay. no chit chit chit. I know that. I know that. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as uh, as long as you understand your place in the world. This is I a classic to... Mark Thompson time waster. All right, uh, Michael. We'll, well, is, we will take a meeting on it. It is truly one of the lesser Liam Neeson impressions as well. Hmm. Um, all right. So let's talk about movies. And this is not a very very big week. Again, it's January. It's the dead zone uh, when it comes to releasing uh, new films. Uh, some prestige things that didn't get wide release in December when they were put out for awards consideration are coming out. And okay. our first movie is one of those, although it didn't, uh, it, you know, it did get some acknowledgement. But uh, it, I think it's worth checking out. And let's lead with it. Uh, written and directed by Ava DuVernay. Uh, mm. Origin is a docudrama based on the nonfiction bestseller Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. Uh, which addresses the scourge of racism in the U.S., its source, its reasons, um, uh, as an element of a caste system that's been in place since slavery days and before. And it's a powerful book, and this is a fascinating 
attempt to bring the book in some form to the screen. Origin is also about origin. The movie is also about Wilkerson's personal odyssey as she tries to overcome losses in her life and cope with the uh, tragedy of Trayvon Martin's senseless murder by traveling to various crucial locations in the world, Delhi and Berlin in particular, and researching her theories for the book. Uh, and, you know, caste systems are a major part of Indian society. Um, in Berlin, it turns out that uh, Jim Crow laws were um, underpinning some of the treatment of the Jews by the Nazis. They sure. looked at those Jim Crow laws in the States as um, models for how they might deal with the population. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, and it, it's... Uh, so, I'm sorry, this is a drama or this is a documentary? It's a docudrama. Okay. And it's done by Ava DuVernay. It's based on the book, but it also incorporates elements of the author's life, which are, of course, uh, dr addressed in the book as well. So uh, she's researching her theories for the book and folding in those aspects of Wilkerson's life and her work. The movie is a thought-provoking drama of ideas and exploration. It can get a little dry now and then in its devotion to Wilkerson's thesis, and it is literally all over the map as she does all this traveling, but it carries you along on the protagonist's journey and her uh, dauntless pursuit of truth and understanding is ultimately so uplifting. And uh, Ingenue Ellis Taylor as Isabel Wil uh, Wilkerson is so honest and passionate in her performance that you can't help but be moved. Um, it counts as a bounce back, as far as I'm concerned, for DuVernay, who scored big with Selma, her 2014 biopic oh, sure, about Martin Luther King Jr., yeah but missed the target big time with uh, what was a highly anticipated 2018 adaptation of the well-loved fantasy novel, A Wrinkle in Time, which was neither a critical nor commercial success. And I'm talking about the, the movie, not the book. Ingenue is a dingler. No, uh, oh, I'm name. sorry, Dauntless is a dingler. No, yeah, Ingenue is her name. Oh, then I will have to remove the Can ding. You re do you have like a reverse ding? Oh, we don't, but uh, it will bad. be taken off. I'm sorry. It will so be, thank you. It will be taken off the board. You're so quick on the trigger. Several people, though, mentioned it. That's why I had to. Uh, well, uh, they, you know. Didn't it know sounds it was... good, says Gordon. Uh, it, this, yeah, you oh, really yeah. like this. It's like I'm referring to her as that Ingenue Ellis Taylor. No, yeah. her name is Ingenue. I get it. Ellis Taylor. Scourge is a ding word, says Tom. Sure. Uh, uh, well, despite the occasional heavy handedness and the difficulty of creating a coherent picture out of Wilkerson's relationships, uh, her travels and her scholarly insights, you know, as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, it feels a little scattershot, but Origin finds DuVernay rediscovering her mojo. Uh, Ellis is wonderful, and she's complimented, uh, complimented by a, a formidable cast, including John Bernthal as Wilkerson's loving and devoted husband, a white man, by the way, as well as Vera Farmiga, Audra McDonald, wow. Nisi Nash Betts, Nick Offerman, Connie Nielsen, wow. and Blair Underwood in significant supporting roles. That is some serious acting power uh, unleashed in the service of what I think is an important movie. And uh, it's almost... And, and, but, and a good movie. It's good, yeah. It, it Again, it goes in so many different directions. It's hard to... Um, it's hard to follow... Uh, her sensibility, what she meant in terms of the filmmaking, but it, ultimately it just felt like something that I, you know, it wasn't like the castor oil situation where you take something because it's good for you. No, no, that's why, I'm, that's why I make the point. It's not just an uh, important movie. I think it's an important it's, movie, but it's a good movie, it's too. A good it's movie. a good watch. Yeah, uh, so it, in a perfect world, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just to ask you as a kind of last question, sure. you would have... Your note would be, I wish there was more coherence to the direction. There is that... so, so much that she tries to do here I in see. terms of telling Wilkerson's personal story. I, I, I suppose the book does that. I've not read the book. I'm but, sure the book does that. Yeah, yeah. And, and pulls it all together. So on the you screen. You just can't do that on, on, it, on screen. Not yeah. to the extent that you can do it on a book where you can kind of ruminate as you read. You can stop ruminate. and go back. Anyway. Yeah. What's uh, next? Yes, that's in theaters just so as you know. Okay. Um, next on the docket, well, you know, it's January. And because it's January, I didn't expect much from an unheralded science fiction flick. But damned if ISS isn't a pretty solid thriller wow. set in a claustrophobic environment, that of the International Space Station, where detente in the form of a six-person crew, three Americans and three Russians, reigns over all. So the sextet are there to work together for scientific advancement. 
until something really bad happens thousands of miles below the oh, surface of the earth. Oh, I love this co- uh, sextet. You're right, isn't it? Uh, uh, really wow. A numerical description. Oh, okay. I'm anyway, loving this. Down on, on Earth, bad things start happening, and the two ground control stations, one for each country, send orders to their citizens in orbit to each take control of the ISS. Oh, my God. So I in, love this in concept. So, in some ways, it reflects what's been happening sure. internationally between Russia and America, who have I, done this. I've always wondered how they get along up there, given all of the strife that between the two countries. I got I'm, one word for you. Vodka. <laughs> no, I don't know. Interstellar vodka. So Ariana DeBose, Oscar winner for Spielberg's West Side Story remake. Yeah. Chris Messina, a, a pretty wonderful uh, uh, actor and John Gallagher Jr. also uh, a good actor, They're like a kind of uh, character actors, but Messina has a little bit of the lead to him. Uh, they uh, play the U.S. contingent, and they're probably the most recognizable performers here. But the trio playing the Ruskies acquit themselves admirably. Um, you may have a good idea where this is going, by the way. At now, do they speak extent. Russian, or is everybody speaking English? English and Russian, back and forth. And the uh, so uh, it language, feels very authentic. The language barrier, to some extent, becomes an issue because not. Every one of the Americans understands oh, that's Russian cr- perfectly. This is cr- I can't wait to and see this. Not every one of the Russians understands American, but maybe that's a, a red herring. I just oh, want to say. That's, this is really great. Where well, can I see this? It's, uh, it's I need in, to see this right now. No, I can't even listen to the rest of your no, segment. No, it's in theaters, and it's it's not a great movie. Oh, it's it's just okay. really fun, good, and I think you'll be terribly entertained by it. And remember, you've got, like, you know, DeBose is a wonderful actress, and even if you know where it's going, getting there is tense fun. And the special effects in the uh, expectedly claustrophobic confines of the space station, looking out the ISS window down to Earth where something bad is happening, uh, and during any extravehicular activity are definitely up to snuff. And the direction by Gabriella Calperthwaite, enlivens Nick Schaefer's okay script. If there's anything that's, you know, to, to be chided, it's like the script is not great, but it's pretty, pretty the solid. Great concept. Chided is a ding word. You know, you may buy into SSS because of the cast and their commitment to the premise and the predicament the characters face. It's, I was entertained and it's in theaters. And this is the sort of thing I think that you're going to want to wait for. And then one weekend night, you and Courtney will kick back and watch this thing. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, don't go berserk. Uh, all right. Now, all right. Um, <clears throat> let's get to a third and final movie yes, for today. And it's, you know, the kind of movie you roll you roll your eyes at me covering because, yeah, it's made by foreigners. And I know right. you, you want to buy American, I'm an American. Mark. I want something with subtitles and guns. That's what America's about. Uh, without subtitles and lots of guns. Well, this has subtitles and guns. Mm. So I don't know. It's it, We're halfway there. So uh, we'll return to docudrama. Yeah, without subtitles. Exactly. Or historical drama, to be yes. more precise. The go ahead. Settler is a, a potent and revelatory movie about revelatory is genocidal activities in the country of Chile wow. at the start of the 20th century when wealthy aristocrats were methodically trying to exterminate the indigenous people and gobble up all of their land and resources. Wow. So, so it's hear- like uh, killers of the... Flower, Flower Moon. Moon, in its way, in its own they way. are they are sister uh, films. I think in in terms of their uh, stories and what their uh, protagonists are are up to. So our entree into the situation is an expedition by a maverick British army officer, an American mercenary, and a native Chilean who is an ace marksman. So they this trio are hired by a rich, well-connected landowner who wants to keep control of his massive acres of property, which means getting rid of the locals by any means necessary. Uh. So The Settlers is a beautifully shot uh, and disturbing film that addresses issues that we continue to confront today in various corners of the globe and in our bar- uh, our backyard as well. Sure. I, um, although it has the feel of a Western Uh, You know, these guys are on horseback trotting around the Chilean countryside. It's takedown of colonialism, European racism, and unbridled capitalism. Give it deeper dimensions than a simple horse opera. So The Settlers is an impressive directorial debut by the movie's co-screenwriter, Felipe uh, Galvez Haberle. For those of you who need to know, Mark... It's in English and with the aid of subtitles on screen. It's also in Spanish and the language of the indigenous people. Well, puedo hablar español entonces. No, no va a haber problema. There's not going to be a problem with me. Oh, 
Okay. I'm glad to hear that. I actually uh, can't under- – I-, I can speak it, but I really can't understand it very well. It's my issue. It's in select theaters. I'm really looking forward to it, though, and it's true. I think it was pointed out in the chat. I just glanced at it uh, that – this is a story from all around the world. I mean, essentially, the um, the colonialization of various places all over the world was going on since the beginning of time. Here it is. I think it's Maude who said this. Yeah. Well, uh, kind of like all over the planet, one yeah. horror story at a time. I think that's exactly right. right. I mean, and right now, it's playing out so um, publicly in the Middle East, sure. particularly uh, the Israeli-Hamas conflict. Absolutely right. And the, uh, a, uh, I mean, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I've just come back from, in fact, Chile. I mean, you know, why uh, this is the, why this is a, I think, uh, interesting and probably painful look. That uh, you know, why do they speak Spanish all over Latin America? Because, well, because the Spanish went there and they they took over. Spain and, colonized. Them. Yeah, that's why they speak Spanish. <laughs> and so no again, other reason. it's it's it covers those issues. It's a very it's very beautiful to look at and also very troubling because of the uh, story that, that s- seems never ending. Wait, is it in theaters or where is it? It is in select theaters. All and right, again, so. all three of these movies are going to be good for home viewing. It's not all that necessary to see them on the big screen unless we're talking that big LED screen you have in your uh, in yeah. your uh, den. Mark. I want to ask you of uh, quickly as we run out of time about one TV offering. Oh, I have a plethora of them that we will no, zip the through. Plethora but, oh, is oh, great, but I, yeah, we just in case we don't zip through everything, yeah. I would wonder about uh, Monsieur Spade. The, okay, so uh, we, okay. We, we previewed it last week. Okay, I can you preview it a little bit it. more for me? I will absolutely preview uh, a little more of it. Tell everybody Mr. again. That's Clive Owen. It, now, Monsieur Spade is on AMC and AMC Plus, and they're going to dribble it out. Uh, episode by episode, I guess on Sundays maybe, and it stars the fine British actor Clive Owen as Detective Sam Spade, the hero of Dashiell Hammett's novel set in our beautiful San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And in this um, extrapolation of his story, yeah. um, Sam Spade, played by Owen, has hit 60, and he decides to move to the south of France. And once he gets there, obviously... Um, a man of his uh, reputation and repute will find himself in circumstances that require uh, his brawn, his brain, his skill. Special uh, set of skills. A special set of skills <laughs> okay. that Sam Spade, even at 60, has. Right. And uh, in this case, uh, there are mysteries to un- uh, uncover, and it's uh, shot uh, in you know fine... Uh, location form so you're in France with uh, Sam Spade and the locals uh, are not that wild about a a guy of his nature and what's really interesting about the story is that he finds himself uh, a landowner by marriage and um, he becomes a part of the community like it or not and when uh, trouble comes a calling, Sam Spade is caught in the middle of it. I oh. really enjoyed it a lot. All right. Episode one, uh, it, it drew me in. If you like that sort of thing, the contemporary equivalent of Dashiell Hammett on some level is the great author Harlan Coben, who has become a little industry of himself. Sure. Uh, his movie, Tell, uh, his book, Tell No One, was made into a terrific French movie. I highly recommend seeking out Tell No One, the uh, French film based on Harlan Coben's novels, but he's also converted a bunch of his novels into episodic TV miniseries. So um, Stay Close and Shelter and The Stranger, all of which have been on Netflix, are must-watches, and so is his latest, which is uh, available right now on Netflix, Fool Me Once. And the premise is a, a, a very attractive woman who was a member of the British military and stationed in Afghanistan Uh, is also a mother and a wife. Uh, Her sister dies, and she comes home to deal with it. And in front of her very eyes, her husband is shot. And we seem to uh, be starting out with this massive tragedy. And the question is, who killed the husband? And is it related to the sister's death as well? Mm-hmm. This stuff is uh, wow. really engaging from the get-go. Michael likes Fool Me Once. Masterful, masterful uh, story guy uh, has uh, come up with another really great series. 
And his production company has a deal with Netflix, and it's fine because the work has been great. Yeah, the Harlan Coben stuff is really, really good. Criminal Record on Apple TV uh, is also a recommendation. With Slow Horses on hiatus until its fourth season, uh, I am on board a new UK police procedural mystery set in London with the great Peter Capaldi, who was uh, the doctor on Doctor Who, or one of them, who is the star of the hilarious political satire, The Thick of It, and is in fine form here as a veteran detective with a few secrets that may very well be exposed by a crusading, young, up-and-coming detective on the force, played by Kush Jumbo, who is uh, familiar to American audiences for The Good Wife and The Good Fight. And she is currently, Doctor Who fan, she's currently playing Lady Macbeth opposite David Tennant, one of the big Doctor Who stars uh, who's playing Macbeth on the West End in London right now. Look at you at the West End up there. Yeah, you know, got to do it. Anyway, Criminal Record is, uh, I guess, just aired its third episode via Apple TV, and I am hooked. And I'm loving it, Michael. I, I want to throw in one more. Well, I, I'm, we're really running late. I love it, though. Go for okay, it. Okay, uh, we have a minute. Ted, a prequel <laughs> to the Ted movies. Don't tell me when we have a minute. Ted uh, is on Hulu. Most of this show. Hey, come on. I'm watching the clock. Ted is. Uh, yeah. Ted so, is. So the Ted movies were about uh, the relationship between uh, Seth foul McFarlane's mouth to... foul mouth drug abusing Boston area teddy bear come to life and the boy who wished him into existence. And Mark. Uh, They're you know, promoting the hell out of this. You like it? Uh, yeah. The, the series is much better than the, the sequel, Ted 2. But. Um, Mark Wahlberg plays this character, John Bennett, in the original movie, and he's obviously a grown man, and he's with this teddy bear who he's got a, almost a lifelong relationship with. This is the prequel uh, with Max Burkholder as the teenage version a version of Wahlberg's character, Scott Grimes and uh, Alana Ubach as uh, John's loudish dad and frazzled mom, and McFarlane, of course, voicing Ted. It is occasionally lowbrow, like McFarlane's animated sitcom stuff. In fact, you can hear echoes of Family Guy dad Peter Griffin in McFarlane's Ted voice, but I laughed out loud a few times each episode. And I want to also point out that our longtime pal, the wonderfully incisive comedian, writer, and actor Dana Gould is a creative consultant for the show, mm -hmm. wrote at least one very funny episode and also appeared in it. So I'm on board with you Ted. You like Ted. Uh, yeah, I did. I and did. Uh, is it... Uh available for binging or you have yeah, to watch yeah, it it's just... on it's on hulu oh just... it's on i thought it's peacock no no it's on hulu it says I... peacock event series january it's on 11th. peacock yeah thank isn't you. peacock hulu no, aren't they all together in all one right thing? so let's quickly talk right. about ted he loves it he says yeah, there's some laugh, laugh out loud moments like family guy a couple of cringe moments too kind of lowbrow stuff but he enjoys it monsieur spade having seen the first episode he really likes this clive owen a portrayal of Sam Spade has moved to the south of France, and he's drawn back in to something that he is uniquely, perhaps, equipped to handle. Criminal Record is the UK police procedural with Peter Capaldi, the veteran detective with secrets possibly exposed by Kush Jumbo. And Fool Me Once is on Netflix Beautiful woman, her sister dies. She's drawn back to handle that. And then her husband is shot in front of her. Is it related to her sister's death? That, again, on Netflix. He liked all of those offerings for your streaming pleasure. Now to the big screen. The Settlers takes place in Chile, where wealthy aristocrats are trying to wipe out the native peoples. It's in Spanish with English subtitles and some English, too, you said, right? Yeah, English with no subtitles. <laughs> oh, it's English with no subtitles. Yeah, you won't need the subtitles when the English comes on. Uh, <laughs> but there is Spanish with subtitles oh, yeah, also. and for the okay. indigenous language, too, which is not precisely Spanish, Mark. Okay, no, I get it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyway, he likes uh, the settlers. Yeah, I did. Uh, ISS. It's the one I can't wait to it's see. It's fun. It's a fun Sci-fi offering set in the space station a with thriller. the Russians and the Americans. And then a conflict and tensions between the two countries, Russia and America. How do the people on board the International Space Station handle those tensions? Vodka. Ariana DuBose is in this one. And it is in theaters. And finally, Michael told us about Origin. The Ava DuVernay offering based on casts which was the book 
And it's a docudrama. Michael liked it very much, thinks it's a good movie and also an important movie. It is in theaters. Wow. What a ride you've taken us on, Michael well, Snyder. and a lot of positive feedback by the culture blaster. I, I yeah. you know, I'm seldom this enthusiastic about things. And again, yeah. there's I'm never not, been anything like I'm this. Not over like the you moon haven't really, about, yeah. Not over the moon about those movies, but they're right. good. Yeah. Of kind. Right. Well, I, um, I'm excited about what it. What can you tell us about the scene? Hey, he's oh, not over God. the moon, Larry, but he likes most of the offerings. I am right now focused on one thing and one thing only. 5.30 tomorrow yeah. at Levi Stadium, the Niners take on the Green it's Bay It's going Packers. to be wet. The Niners are favored by nine and a half. <laughs> that seems like a lot of points. But I've talked to people who go, no, nah, Niners are going to blow them out. They've got a running game. They've got a lot of things that the Cowboys didn't have. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, Green Bay, not particularly great against the run. And we have a run stopper back, the um, gentle mountain of a man, Eric Armstead. I'm glad to see him back on the line this uh, this coming Saturday evening. I'm glad to see you back on the line. You can find him in the Marina, Marina Times and here on Fridays. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye-bye, Michael Go Snyder, Culture Blaster. Niners!